So my wife and I the other day were having a conversation about being balanced. We were talking to somebody and we had given them a compliment about something that they had done. And the response was basically like, oh, well, you know, what had happened eventually and da 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 And they had obviously worked really hard um, to make this happen, to make these changes happen. And so in the car ride afterwards, we were thinking, you know, it's kind of interesting how people get so excited about things. They want to tell you things and share things with you. And you give them a compliment and their response is a little underwhelming at times. And so the topic came up of, well, we just have to be balanced, right? Um, you know, we don't want to accept too much praise. And I said, hold on a second. I said, why do we think that? I said, I understand that we don't want to think too much of ourselves and become prideful, right? We all know the person that thinks too much of themselves, right? How do they act, a person who thinks too much of themselves? Well, they act cocky. They act arrogant. Maybe they talk condescendingly to you. They don't listen to you. They don't acknowledge your thoughts. But then how does somebody act who is the opposite of that? Who isn't arrogant, but they're actually so low that when you give them a compliment, they can't even accept it or they don't know how to accept it. And I liken that to it would be the same thing for a responsible person to abdicate their responsibility or to say, oh, that mistake yeah, even though it was clearly their mistake, you pass the buck and you blame someone else. Oh, uh, well, it was because this person over here, uh, what they did caused me. And, you know, when a person won't accept that they've made a mistake and they keep passing the blame to someone else, well, we would say, you know, that person isn't taking responsibility. But when you do the same thing when someone gives you a compliment, I think that is also showing that there's an imbalance the other way, which is that, you don't know how to value yourself properly. And this is a, a topic that I'm passionate about because my whole life, growing up without a father, I really never had a baseline for what was the proper level of valuing yourself. All I ever heard was, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And very little did I receive praise. And I realized that if you're not accustomed to receiving praise, then when you do receive it, it's almost like too much at times. Like you don't quite know how to respond, especially if you've been conditioned to think that you're worthless or that you have nothing inherently valuable to give, that everything that you do is the result of something external, which at times is true. And we have family and friends and teams and people that help us. But that doesn't mean that we should not value ourselves or understand the proper level of valuing ourselves. That can lead to some serious problems, especially if you're a creative person, because many times you have to create something that other people may not even visualize or see in their head, and you might see it very clearly, or it might be a song that you're writing, and you might hear this whole concept, and you get a feeling, and you're inspired, which reminds me, I'll tell you about the new Arcade Fire song and the email that they sent out. Oh. But yeah, you have to know how to properly know your worth and know when to say thank you. Because isn't that what we're trying to do? when we create something or help somebody or even share our time with somebody, we're hoping that we come together in a spirit of cooperation, in a spirit of trust, in a spirit of love, right? In a spirit of love. And when you do something from your heart with love as the intention in your heart, then what do you want to happen? You want positive things to happen. You want good results. And so when the hard work that you put together or that you do shows fruit of your labor and other people notice that 
and they say, you know what? Good job. You did a really good job here. We appreciate your hard work. We value you. Now, we could immediately say, oh, well, I could have done better, and, you know, oh, you know, I didn't have enough time, and, oh, if I, blah, 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 you know, continuously, we could just pass the value off, you know, like, oh, no, I wasn't even a part of this. Now, I don't think that's healthy, because it breeds this inner struggle in people that you need to feel validated, you need attention, we all need love. We know this because there's been studies about babies in hospitals who didn't have parents or were dropped off, things like that. The kids that were not touched uh, or shown love or held, those kids got sick and a lot of them died. And so that shows that we need love. We need to be nourished by those around us. And so there is a proper level of nourishment that we need, just like a proper level of water, food, all these things that our body needs, I would argue that we need love. We need compliments. We need a certain proper amount of that in our life. Again, not to go too far the, in one direction and say, well, I'm the best and no one's better than me. And, you know, Liam Gallagher from Oasis, he used to be like, we're better than the Beatles, man. Yeah. You know, screw those guys. We're better than... The-. It's like... And at the time, I remember thinking, man, I really like some of their songs, but that cocky attitude is... And I know in some scenes and punk rock and stuff, you kind of need that like aggressive attitude, and that's the whole point of it. But in everyday life, you know, that's not, I don't think that's the proper way to be. Uh, because we are an amalgamation of all of our experiences and the people who have interacted with us, the advice that we have received even the stupid advice that we have received, but we're also human, which means we have feelings in addition to our thoughts. And so many people seem to only get caught up in hearing things or thinking things and not stopping to feel, not stopping to say, wow, you know, I I feel really low today. I feel really depressed. Why is that? Well, maybe I've been around some really depressing people. You know, maybe I've been around some people that haven't been upbuilding me. Or when they do reach out, you know, that it's not genuine. They just, you know, they have some ulterior motive as to why they're reaching out. And that's not healthy. You have to recognize when you're in an unhealthy environment. And I would argue that you need to supplement, just like we do with vitamins and other things like that. If you don't have enough love in your life, if you're not feeling encouraged and positive, then there's something that could be addressed. And I think it's very important for artistic people to understand that and to realize how much we need that. Because I'll tell you, when I got married, I got married when I was 27, and I thought, I mean, I knew I had some serious things to work on, but I had no idea that I was as dysfunctional back then as, as I had thought. You start living with another person and suddenly you realize, wow, there's a lot about life that I have very wrong. I've obviously listened to some really stupid people uh, up until that point in my life, which goes to show, and Jordan Peterson talks about this, about be careful who your friends are because your friends should be people that want the best for you. And we'll tell you that. You don't want to be surrounded by yes men. And that's one danger of creativity is if you become really successful, you tend to get surrounded by yes people. They want to get in the clubs with you. They want to get into your shows, uh, your exhibits, your performances, whatever it is. Uh, If you're in the company, they want to get a job at that company. They're always wanting things from you. And so then when you ask those people something, they're always like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Good job. That's not real. You know, that's usually that's fake. That's not the real genuine love and encouragement that we need. Um, And creative people need to watch out for that. And I'll do another video that talks about the dark side of creativity and some of the crazy, crazy things that I saw during my time living in Las Vegas for 25 years, DJing there as a professional DJ in the nightlife in Las Vegas. Yeah, lots of crazy stuff. 
but learn how to value yourself. Ask yourself, do I know how to accept a compliment? And the next time that you do get a compliment, pay attention to your response. Pay attention to how you feel. Because if it's authentic, and if the compliment is acceptable and accurate with what you have done, then you need to recognize that, I would argue, and document that and say, you know, I did work very hard. Um, if it's a song and somebody says, hey, I loved your song, you may not think it's the best song you've ever written, but obviously something in that song spoke to that person. And so they're telling you, hey, I enjoyed it. I really like that. You know, I've had people reach out to me that I don't even know on Instagram, even though just a handful of people. But the fact that they took time out of their day to tell me, hey, this track sounds really cool. Thanks for sharing. That's awesome. That's like a genuine compliment from somebody that you don't even know. And those are the types of things that you can say, okay, well, at least some people are enjoying my music, which is why I made it, because I want to share it with people. I want people to, if they like that kind of style of music, I want them to enjoy it and to connect with it. I was thinking about the new Arcade Fire song, The Lightning, part one and two. Oh, my goodness. If you haven't heard it, listen to it. It is amazing. It is one of those songs that just takes you from wanting to cry in some moments to just wanting to like stand up and beat your chest and just scream. It's, it's amazing. I'll read you the email they sent out. Right, gotta have my drink first. <laughs> like Dale Cooper in Twin Peaks. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Every day, once a day, give yourself a present. Don't plan it. Don't wait for it, just let it happen. Could be a new shirt at the men's store, a cat nap in your office chair, or two cups of good, hot, black coffee. Like this. This is my gift today. Starbucks Dragon Drink. Mm. So good. So Thursday, the day before my birthday, I get this email on St. Patrick's Day. What will the light bring? We, capital W-E, are so excited to present our new song, The Lightning 1 and 2. It was recorded with Nigel Godrich at El Paso, Texas, in the shadow of the Mexican border wall, which lay unfinished at the edge of the property. It was peak COVID. El Paso was the epicenter in the U.S. at that time. They were using prison inmates to move bodies to the overfull morgues. Because the healthcare system was completely overwhelmed. I'll never forget finishing the take and walking straight to our outdoor communal space where we had screwed a television into a tree so we could watch election results outside to see the news that Trump had lost the election. The emotion in the vocal was inspired by the Haitian immigrants that were amassing on the U.S. border after boarding ships from Haiti and walking from as far as Brazil for a chance at freedom only to be met with whips and dogs and officers on horseback. I was lyrically inspired, says Wynn from Arcade Fire, by the optimism I see in my child living in paradise beneath a poison sky. A great quote from the song. But mostly we wanted to play the song so fast and hard that you can't breathe when it's over, with the realization that you can't win them all, even when you give it all. A fourth place anthem. And a reminder that a day, a week, a month, a year, every second brings me here. The video was directed by their friend and fellow Montreal DIY scene alum, Emily Kaibach. She expresses the feeling of the last two years, trying to make grand plans only to have the storms of life force you to improvise. Sometimes bright flashes of lightning to guide our way, light up the sky, and burn it all down so we can start again. 